Hey there guys, how's it going? This is Rex Roo here, and welcome back to yet another gaming tutorial, and what we're going to be going over today is finally, after all of these years, some 3D. So, a lot of you guys have actually been asking for it, and I mean a lot, uh, a lot more than usual actually as well, so I figured I'd go ahead and finally give in and do one of these, and I'd start off with uh, one of the most simplest forms of 3D, at least in my opinion, which is a platform 3D game as the one you're seeing right now. And this is basically going to be the end result of this tutorial, and this is actually an example I made as well, which you guys can go ahead and download in the description below, because I'm going to put a link there to my website, and you guys can just go ahead and download that for free and do with it what you will. Um, <coughs> But uh, pretty much what we're going to be doing in here is basically going over how to create this example, and this is what it looks like when it's not being run, um, or ran, I suppose. And uh, some people think that 3D is very complicated. People haven't really gotten to it before. They think it's a totally new concept and just infamously harder than uh, just regular GML game kind of stuff, or I really shouldn't say GML, but regular just game design and building games and game maker in general. And I'm here to say that today it really is not that hard. And from this example I made, I tried to make it as simple as possible too, because you guys know how much I love simple. And um, yeah, it is very, very easy to do. So Nonetheless, let's just go ahead and stop wasting time, for one thing, and uh, get right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is head over to the SPR underscore player sprite here. And the first thing that I want to point out is this is a 32 by 32 character. And let's go ahead and check him out a little bit more. And uh, he's also a little bit more detailed than he probably should be for just a tutorial. Actually, a lot of these sprites here are, or a lot of these images are. But I don't know, I was feeling a little bit artsy today. But uh, one thing to note is the size of this character, as I said, is just a 32 by 32 dimension. Uh, kind of count there, whatever uh, you want to call it by. And... Um, Whatever you do decide to change this up to, uh, it doesn't really mess anything up as far as the 3D is concerned. So you can really change the size of your character up to whatever you feel like. Now, the ground sprite, on the other hand, is a little bit of a different situation. Um, if you were to change this up, it really wouldn't matter because we're actually going to be specifying the size of this anyway uh, in this object's code. So I would just kind of recommend keeping this around 64 by 64, 32 by 32, or 8 by or just smaller type of dimensions because we are going to be resizing this later. Now, one curious thing that I would like to know that you may or may not have mentioned already is this ground sprite here is just a plain black block. And when we run the game or ran the game a couple minutes ago or seconds ago, hopefully not a couple minutes ago, um, it had this texture right here. And the reason for that is because in 3D, uh, we don't really go off the images or outlook on the sprites themselves anymore, um, at least if they're 3D because the player kind of kept his old image thing, but the ground sprite did not do that. And the reason is in 3D, what we're going to be using is textures. So as you'll see here, um, this is just a little 64 by 64 texture that I drew, and again, a little bit more detailed than it probably needs to be. But uh, what we're going to be doing is plastering this over our ground sprite. And uh, you'll notice as well, I said it's a 64 by 64, and our ground sprite's only a 32 by 32. And and what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be wrapping this texture around the ground. And I know it seems a little complicated now, but believe me, it's really not that hard, guys. Don't fret. We'll get into it in just a little bit here. But next, I want to go ahead and head into our obj underscore player object and see what all is going on in there. So the first thing that we have going on in here is a add event and step step. And um, in this step event here, we have a control, or excuse me, not a control, a code block. And in this code block, we just have some simple gravity. And really quick, one thing I'd... <clears throat> Excuse me, one thing I'd like to note is a really nice feature with this whole 3D kind of stuff in Game Maker is you don't really have to do anything new to actually initialize the 3D. Everything else works the exact same way you would think it would. Um, the only difference here, the only real thing that actually stands out is this D3D start. We'll get into that, or what that is, excuse me, in just a sec here. Um, but basically, this is just player's simple gravity and my collision with the ground. 
and uh, then we have a left kind of movement system here very simple and a jumping movement here and I just want to go through these fairly quickly just so you guys can get a quick glimpse of them because I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to put the code or whatnot in the description but we're down to the room start event and in this event we have this D3D start code here and this is basically just initializing 3D in Game Maker and I believe if you really wanted to you could probably put this in a separate object but since it's kind of a platform game I'd like to keep it within the player for now um, just because he's going to be traveling over the majority of the room anyway so it's kind of good to keep it with him but if you wanted to put it in another object or something uh, you could go ahead and do that as well that would be fine. Alright, and in the room end, we just have a simple D3D end, and uh, that just takes care of ending the D3D. Pretty self-explanatory, but I thought I'd show that anyway. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the OBJ underscore ground. You'll notice in here, we only have one event this time, and that is the draw event. And again, we have another code block within the control panel, and let's go ahead and see what's going on in here. So we have a D3D underscore draw underscore block little snippet of code here. And uh, within here we have a lot of various values. And what these values are basically doing is setting up the texture, as you can see here, text underscore ground, as well as the size of the block itself. So it all says 32 by 32 along the lines of until here. And over here for the text underscore ground, we have 1, 1. Now at first glance, these might look a little weird, like what the heck do these all stand for? And basically, all these stuff, uh, or all of these, all of these things, no, all of these things from uh, this 32 to the end of this 32 over here is setting up the size for your block. So if we go ahead and just to give you guys an example, uh, let's change all these values to 16. And the nice thing is too, you guys probably already were aware of this, but just, whoops, just in case you weren't, um, if you highlight one of these values, one of these numbers, it will show down here exactly where it is. And so you can see kind of what it stands for. So this is like the, the Z space, uh, and that's actually an extra space in the 3D world, just in case you guys were a little bit curious. And as you'll notice, uh, we have a lot smaller blocks here, and uh, they're all 16 by 16, both X, Y, and Z. So, you know, that's just kind of how that works. And you can, of course, kind of play around with this. There can be some fun little, um, fun little, I guess, dimension things you can pull off there. But for the time being, I'm just going to keep this all 32 uh, by 32, and whoops, there we go. Alright, so now for the text underscore ground. Now, this is probably pretty obvious already, but basically all this is uh, standing for is just whatever we've named the um, uh, the texture for our ground over here. So mine's called text underscore ground, hence I named it the same thing over here. And these ones are basically just values for the wrapping, for how many times uh, they're going to wrap. So if we put this to like 5 and this to like say 5, and I know this is taking a little while to explain guys, or rather I'm explaining it more slower than I usually probably would in some other tutorials. Um, you know, 3D isn't necessarily the hardest thing, but I want to make sure that people are actually understanding this. So I apologize if I seem like I'm going a little bit slower, um, but I'm doing it on purpose. So. Anyway, um, you'll notice here that there is a pretty exponential change that has gone on here in our uh, 3D text wrapping. So that's definitely not what we want. We only want it to wrap around just a single time. So we're just going to put it 1 and 1. And again, you can see how many times uh, it's actually repeating down here. So we have H repeat and V repeat for horizontal and vertical repeat. And uh, you can go ahead and again just mess around with those values uh, and do what you will with those. And you'll have a fun little outlook and stuff on uh, each time you run the game. So Finally, what we want to do is go ahead and create a new object and call it P3D if you're doing this again from scratch and not basing this off the example, um, or maybe you have the example as a reference, whatever the case, uh, we need an object called P3D, and uh, that stands for Perspective 3D, and you can pretty much name it whatever you like, I suppose. Um, I haven't tested it, I've just kind of named it that, but I'm sure it should work. And oh my goodness, there's my phone. <laughs> I apologize, guys. Give me just a quick minute here. Okay, so we're back. I apologize for that uh, that little interruption here, guys. But nonetheless, hopefully you guys are still nice and comfy and ready to continue on as I am. So let's just go ahead and do that. 
or just that, I suppose. I just wanted, wanted to avoid that word just again, <laughs> but I didn't see a real option to do so. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the depth here. So you notice the depth is set to 100, and this is just ensuring that our little perspective 3D camera is going to be in front of everything else, uh, so it doesn't like go behind stuff and whatnot and get all, uh, I guess, uh, concealed by other things um, so yeah that's just kind of to sort out um, this per per uh, excuse me perspective situation in terms of our 3d camera all right so what we're gonna go ahead and do is take a look at the code within our draw event that we have going on here and there really isn't a lot of code but it does look kind of beast like at the beginning but don't worry I'll go over what all this stuff kind of does um, basically what we're doing here is this says d3d underscore set underscore projection and this is setting our camera for our game, for a 3D game. And um, this is basically how you do it in the 3D world, at least for this sort of 3D that we're doing today. And it says obj underscore player dot x, obj underscore player dot y, or I guess a little comma right there, I forgot to mention that. But uh, in place of these obj underscore player objects, um, or object names I suppose, uh, if your player's name something else and or character, uh, just go ahead and plug the name of that in place of the obj underscore player, and uh, you should be good to go. Now, a lot of these values here are basically just setting the angles and whatnot for the camera, and I'm not going to go over all of these, but one I will go over because I feel, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it is somewhat important to go over because people might actually want to change this more than some of the other values that we have going on here, and that is the 500 right here, and this is basically um, the point of how close and or far your camera is going to be. So currently, I have it set to 500, but if we set this to something like 300, go ahead and run the game. You'll notice that we are now, whoa, we're a lot closer to our cute little character here, and uh, that's pretty much all that does. So that's basically how that works, and a lot of these other values work pretty much the exact same way in that they change how our camera is positioned, I suppose. That's, that's kind of the best way I should say that, um, or could say that, excuse me, I could probably um, say it a little other ways. But overall, all these values here, you can go ahead and just kind of mess around with them a little bit, and again, you see what they kind of stand for down here. Um, but yeah, just remember what they are originally so you can just maybe put them back or maybe copy it and then put it somewhere else. And so if you find something that you don't like but you don't remember what it originally was, uh, you could just paste that value back in. So anyway, you can go ahead and test a lot of this stuff on your own. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just continue on with this tutorial because I don't want to take it or excuse me, take too long, um, but nonetheless, the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and if you haven't already, create a room and you want to put your P3D camera in there, and I have mine right here, I'll just go and delete it though and put it right here, and you want to position your ground inside of your room as well, wherever you feel uh, necessary, and I have my ground just kind of positioned all around here, but you could of course put it wherever you want, and I'll just add some more, some just some extra blocks here, just to kind of uh, show you guys how this kind of works. Alrighty. And do a little stairs thing right there. And there we go. That looks good enough to me for now. And of course, finally, you want to go ahead and put your player in the game and run it. And wait for it to load. And this probably is going to be, uh, one thing I forgot to mention too, this is probably going to be uh, lagging a little bit more than it is for me right now. Like right now, it's running perfectly fine for me right now. Uh, there is no lag whatsoever, but because I am recording, especially with just a regular screen capture program, um, we are going to be getting probably just a little lower frame rate, but it should be fine on your guys' end. So anyway, that is pretty much it, guys. That actually is all that we're going to be going over today. Uh, in the future, we might be going over more uh, complicated stuff, but for now, I think this is a pretty good starting place. So if you do have any questions and or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I'll go ahead and either reply or answer to some of those. And uh, well, I'll try to answer to all those, but I'll probably reply to some of those. Um, but anyway, uh, if you want to go ahead and feel free to subscribe for uh, more kind of notifications whenever I put out new tutorials and or videos and all that kind of cool stuff, you can go ahead and do that as well. But that's pretty much it for me, guys. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a bit tired right now, if you can't already tell. Uh, so until next video, and uh, until next time, this has been Rex Fury with another gaming tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it helps you out. And until then, I'll see you all next time.